Um, my name is Jason Williamson, and I'm the vice president of the global startup ecosystem. So you might ask, like, what is that? And I didn't know Oracle did startups. Um, so, so we have a global community of startups from um, San Francisco to Tel Aviv to Sao Paulo to Singapore, all the way up to the UK and, and all over India. And this ecosystem is made up of startups and venture capital and universities and, and all kinds of people in the innovation community. And I just actually recently joined Oracle about almost a year ago. And my journey is, is quite an interesting one. It's not your typical corporate uh, journey. I'm actually a startup guy myself. I've, I've, started a I've been a part of some IPOs. Uh, I started some companies. Uh, I actually ran an NGO in, in Latin America for a few years as well. Um, but I think in all of my journeys, one of the things that I've really learned is that innovation, which is a word we kind of use a lot, that almost kind of loses its meaning sometimes, right? But, but innovation, which is like creating something out of necessity. You know, we need to have it, so we're going to create it. Uh, for me, is sparked by struggle and adversity and how you deal with it, right? So if you talk to startup people or uh, people who have been uh, successful, every single time you're going to find someone that had a hard journey along the way. And so for me, I think I learned to confront uh, adversity and struggle uh, first as a young teenager when I joined the U.S. Marines. There, you're trained to like run towards the struggle, literally, you know, and figuratively. Um, and that helped prepare me for kind of what was next. But, but I think watching someone else that was very close to me and my family deal with struggle and adversity and how they dealt with it was really the biggest inspiration for me and is something that I use today in my uh, work life at Oracle, dealing with startups and even the companies that, that I started. So let me, let me just tell you that story a little bit and, and hopefully you'll be able to learn something from this as well. So um, I, was, I was married kind of young, at least you know people tell me that. I was 20, I don't know, 21 years old, 20, 21 years old and uh, married the girl that I met in high school. So my high school sweetheart, it's great. We're still married too, by the way, 24 years in a row. So very good. Um, and so our first baby was very exciting, right? So if you, any of you have ever experienced that, you know, like you, 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 that's kind of what you do. You get married and you have kind of fun together and you explore and you do your jobs and you kind of learn how to grow up together. At least I did, because I was a teenager when I met her. And then it came time for your first child. It's like, wow, what a great blessing. You have all these hopes and dreams about what life is going to be like. But very quickly, early on in the pregnancy, um, we had discovered that Anna had something called spina bifida. I don't know if you ever heard that before. It is a permanently disabling birth defect. It's where the neural tube, after about the 14th, you medical people can correct me on this, but about the 14th day after conception, the spinal cord forms, and then a little protective coating uh, 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 goes around that. And if it doesn't finish correctly, what results is basically a, a hole in the child's back and the spinal cord will come out. And because of the fluid dynamics within the womb, the brain and stem, and the cerebellum kind of get sucked into the back of their neck. And it can cause all kinds of problems with with learning and even uh, eating. And of course, there's this giant hole in your back, right? Uh, which is the equivalent of basically breaking your back. So kids like Anna are usually wheelchair bound. Um, they have to have shunts in their head to drain the fluid. They often struggle with some learning issues. Um, so anyway, you know, it's just like, wow, having to deal with that when you're 20 nothing years old and you know, it's your first child. That was like, wow, that was really hard to, to kind of deal with. Um, as I was reflecting on this story the other day, uh, I, I realized it was like the first major kind of issue that we had in our marriage that wasn't directly related to somebody's behavior. Like I wasn't being an idiot and we had problems. So like, no, like just like God just kind of said, hey, Jason and Susan, you get to take care of Anna. And so, you know, and that's how we viewed that. So we thought, but it's still a struggle, right? And like, what are we going to do? So my wife 
um, she had learned about an experimental surgery that was going on in the United States for this very um, treatment, for this very uh, 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 disability. Um, but it was experimental. So I felt like I got a medical degree going through this. And one thing I learned in this process is when you go to the doctor to go get uh, some sort of therapy or treatment, they're going to tell you like there's an X percent chance of this happening and an X percent chance of success. And, you know, all of those numbers come from data, data that was studied and researched over years and years and years. Right. But to get to that point, you have to have somebody say, I'll give it a try. And so that was my wife and my unborn child. So we flew to Vanderbilt University in Tennessee um, from North Carolina. That's where, that's where I'm from. That's where we're living at the time. And they, we underwent, or I should say we, my wife and daughter, at 21 weeks gestation. That's um, like the size of a can of Coke, just to give you an idea. Uh, they went through an open womb fetal surgery. So that's not like scoping it, they actually deliver the uterus, open it, drain the fluid, they keep it warm for later because you need it, and then they actually took the child out halfway and sewed her up. The, the skin was so thin you could see through it into her organs. It was, it was incredible that the surgeons could actually do something like that. Uh, incredible that my wife was brave enough to do something like that. It was easy for me because I didn't have to do anything, right? But I just sat in the back and, and, and prayed. And so, so anyway, they, they, they delivered her out and, and um, uh, did the repair. And they put, her back, put, the, put Anna back. They put the fluid in. If you believe it, they actually sew and glue the womb back. And then put it all back inside. And then you just kind of pray and hope that you actually make it to your 40 weeks. And, and Anna did. And throughout that, throughout that experience, you know, we watched uh, her brain go back into place. We watched, um, uh, you know, her, her, her body just develop kind of like what we would have thought would happen. So the day came and, and, and she was born, which is great. And um, she had great leg function and, you know, it was amazing. So, so Anna didn't need to have that shunt. She's an extremely bright student, about to go to college now. Um, she is paralyzed below the knees, but she um, plays basketball for me on the, high, the women's high school basketball team. I'm the head coach, and so she plays for me. And so I watch her. Like, so, she's, so she's not in this wheelchair, but she's still having to deal with, like, Okay, she's got to walk differently and, and she can't wear shoes like other people and she's got, right? And it's just amazing to see this girl have to deal with one thing after another, after another, after another, but never complain and always work through it. And I, and I you know, I would take a step back and be like, man, you know, w what am I dealing with at work, right? And I would look at her and I watch her and how she's forming and growing and, and, and dealing with adversity not in a way that isn't making her weaker, but is actually refining her and making her stronger. And I think, you know, as a younger, as a young married person, I realized that like struggle, and there's a couple things I realized, struggle and pain actually refine you and make you stronger, right? If, if we have easy lives and then you get confronted with hard things, what do you do? You kind of crumble, right? But here I watch Anna and so she gets dealt one blow after another and she's just like, I'm just going to go do it. You know, so for me as an observer, as a dad, like how you parent that was really interesting. So for, it helped me understand that that struggle is good, right? Struggle is good. You get to learn how to persevere through hard things. I think the second thing that I really learned, especially it was really important as, because I was about the time I was starting companies, um, by the way, which was differences are good. You know, you start to learn that um, we're, we're enabled differently, and, and that's actually a good thing, is when you're enabled differently, you learn to solve problems differently. So Anna, she can't walk, like, how do you ride a bike when you can't move your ankles or your calves or your toes? She figures out how to do it. You know, how do you drive a car if you can't feel your feet? Well, she figures out how to do it. You know, you know how do you dribble a basketball down the court and drive the lane if you can't jump? Well, she figures how to do it. So like, wow, that helps me realize when I build a team, Maybe I need to think about differences and bringing people together that have a different lens and a different view on things. Um, 
There was, a, there was another time, too, that I think it, it, it's interesting, uh, is that struggle often prepares you for the next struggle, right? And, and that struggle prepares you for the next one. So she's fast forward about 13, 14 years. She's doing great. Um, and then she, she hit a road, hit a roadblock. Um, she, she had a catastrophic ankle injury. Her, her, her ankle bl- just blew up. And, um, so she was being confronted with having to get a leg amputated. So like, that's pretty rough when you're 13, 14 year old girl, all right, any age. Right. And so watching her deal with that, like here, I'm her dad. And I, and I, and I'm like, you know, honey, I can't tell you to do this. This is something you have to do and you have to decide. And so watching her confront the struggle with, um, with a pragmatic view of let's look at facts. I want to be active in my life and I want to play basketball. So if you need to take the leg, let's take the leg. If we don't need to take the leg, let's not take the leg. So for, as I mentioned before, my wife, uh, I married way up and she uh, per- pursued and pursued and pursued to find options that w- wouldn't remove legs. So super long story short, she, she uh, didn't have to lose the leg. They put a steel rod in her and you know, she lost some function, but she's like back on the court. You know, so, so that one struggle prepared her for the next one. You know, and she was always focused on like, y- you know what, this isn't going to define who I am, but it is a part of me. So, you know, so her identity wasn't that. She realized she was kind of called to something bigger. And so she always kept her eyes on that. So even though that struggle was there for her, she could always pursue the greater thing. The, always pursue the greater thing. So... So struggle often prepares you for the next one. It makes you stronger, obviously. It helps you embrace differences. We all learn that in the family. She has three younger siblings, right? So their view on hard things, a lot different if she was normally abled, right? Um, The last one, which I think is really most important is, and if you're ever thinking of doing a startup, do not fool yourself. You will struggle. It's going to be really hard. It's gonna be really painful. Maybe not physically, but it will be emotionally. And a lot of times that's just the same. But you have to learn to do a struggle in community, right? So we did this in community. We, we you know, there's a, a friend of mine wrote this song and, and he has this line that says, um, why do we hide, uh, why, do we, why don't we share the pain? Why do we hide the pain that we don't see? My joy, my pain, my struggles, they're not just for me right? So if I can share this in community, then people can come around me, they can help me, they can learn from me, and we all get stronger together. So again, when this happened to us, we were young, we had, we had a group of people come around us and feed us and drive us places and take care of us. In high school, she had friends like that. And then when I went through my startups, learning to be very open with our struggles, with our challenges financially, challenges with sales, challenges with technology, helped the team always be like in community with each other. Because if you do that stuff in isolation, right, you're super alone, no one's there to help you, and you're gonna fail alone too, right? So, so I think, you know, as you start thinking about innovation and inspiration and these kind of words we throw around, throw around a lot, you've got to remember that there's another side of that coin. And that, that other side of the coin is struggle. And, and struggle and isn't bad, it's just hard. Hard's not bad either, it's just hard. <laughs> and, and it's okay, it's okay for that to be hard. So kind of three takeaways uh, as we wrap up. Inspiration is sparked by struggle, right? Struggle produces a lot of good things. Um, the other thing you remember is you, you, you must do this in community with each other. And then you learn through struggle that differences are really good and really to be valued. So I'm glad you listened to me for a few minutes and a little bit about my story. And uh, thank you for coming out. Thanks. 